These right here are old fans out of furnaces, and they make some of the best fans for use around the shop and even around the home. Way better than an old propeller axial fan. So keep watching. I'm going to show you how to turn one of these into a useful fan for around the shop. So these are known as centrifugal fans or blower motor fans or squirrel cages. And they do something different than a propeller blade, than an axial fan. They compress the air. And so they take air and force it in and out of areas much better. That's why they're suited for furnace ducts and stuff like that because they can push the air out and through. And they just slide right in, just in this position, just right into the furnace. And generally there'll be, um, there'll be two little screws or something that block this from coming out. So you remove these two little screws and this entire unit just slides right out. And generally your furnace filter will be on uh, this side right here, the side that doesn't have the motor. And so I've had this one kicking around for a long, long time. I mounted some feet on it that I got off of, I think, a, um, an old dryer or something to that effect. Um, just so I could stand it upright and tweak it a little bit more and aim it where I wanted. And then I just added a cord to it and I did add a switch. I originally had a light switch and then I just had this uh, old rheostat dimmer laying around. So I put that on there and so I can turn it on and adjust the speed as I need. Now you, you don't even have to do that. All you have to do is just wire it straight up with a cord, plug it in, is on, pull it out, is off. Um, generally they'll have, uh, a lot of them come with four speeds, some are just two speeds, um, some are three speeds, but one of the first things you need to do besides wiring it up is these are meant, when you're just going to have it free flow and just spraying out to a room, these are meant to always have a load on them, something that's kind of blocking the airflow. So you'll notice you'll, you'll you wire it up, you plug it in, you turn it on and it'll get up to speed, but if you put your hand over it, it actually picks up speed quite a bit because it's used to having a load and actually the, the load on it holds the air back and it actually works less hard. Where if you don't have any sort of restriction on it, it will actually overheat. And you can see that's what I did here. This is kind of a safety device so you don't, I guess, don't read your whole arm into it. But it also blocks the airflow from coming in just a little bit and allows more air to pull into the motor side. And so now I can just have this sitting under the garage door or something and exhausting fumes. Um, I, I put this on the uh, front of cars, on the bumpers and stuff to that, um, blowing right into the radiator so I can do AC work and stuff like that. I can keep cars cool while I'm running. But I wanted to do another one that I jammed permanently up into the attic. And this is gonna be this one. A um, little bit smaller unit. I, I go. I actually fix and repair these, and actually sell off a, quite a few of them. This is a small one sixth horsepower, so it's smaller than this would be used like maybe in a mobile home or a um, an apartment. So it's too small for a regular house. So I, I don't sell these ones very often. This one's a fifth horsepower. Um, usually I sell the third half and three quarter horsepower. A lot more than these. So th this one's just gonna sit around forever. So what I want to do. And I used to have one just like this, is I want to mount this up in the attic, just like this, just up in the rafters of my garage, and so that it blows fresh air directly down on me. So my garage rafters are about 10 feet, but if I put this right up at 10 feet, it's still going to blow down in a pretty, just straight down at me uh, over my workbench, but I don't always stand in the same spot, so I wanted to blow a couple different spaces. So I'm going to actually take this stuff which is kind of like that um, dryer vent stuff. It's really small, it's only three inches. I actually think this was, uh, I salvaged this from the, actually the dumpster. I think this was actually used, it's very, it's way thicker than dryer stuff. I think it was actually used to exhaust um, gas fireplace uh, stuff like that. But what I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually gonna mount four of them and then I can bend it, they'll be really short and I can bend it and blow the air wherever I want. And by having the, It'll actually restrict this side, so I don't actually have to put a restrictor on this side. So I just came up with this plate really fast, drew some holes, and that'll just go right over this. I just put some sheet metal screws just to hold this to the, the blower housing, and then we'll just take some lengths of this flexible tubing, and then I can just aim it wherever 
and it'll blow up. Now this is where a lot of people get nervous because there's a ton of wires coming out of here. And how do you wire this up to a regular plug? It's actually easier than you think. Um, this is a typical one, and when you take them out of their housing, you'll actually have a wiring diagram on virtually every single motor. And it'll tell you, it's actually right there, what color goes to what. But basically, on all these furnace motors, you have your white being your neutral, which is one inside of your plug. And there, all the rest of the colors are your different speeds, with black usually being high, red being a low, blue being a medium and there's also a yellow which is like a medium as well um, but sometimes if it's a capacitor start motor you'll also have a capacitor which can be a little daunting but generally you'll see where that's actually hooked up and that's usually two brown wires and they go off like this motor right here is just a, a single speed and so all, all you have is a same color as house wiring here in the u.s just a, a black and a white so that's pretty straightforward in the capacitor just hangs out over on the side out of the way but what we're going to do here is generally you don't really need anything besides just your high so these other two wires um, can just be capped off you can play around see if you if the high is way too much for you um, you can actually just pick one of these other speeds but you don't hook these up to each other you don't hook them up to anything else you don't hook them all up together and try to run it all you do is you pick the one you want and we're just gonna use high speed. And there we go. I just cut the ends off of the, um, the medium and low speed. And then I just put a wire nut on the end and just taped them up and they won't go anywhere. And if you guys want electrical tape that actually works and actually sticks, um, I'll put a link below in the video description. I used to buy bulk Harbor Freight cheap electrical tape and it was a nightmare. You put it on, it just falls right off. But this scotch, Super 88, or it comes in colors, um, 35, is professional grade electrical tape. This stuff sticks, it stretches nice, it stays on there, it does, doesn't unravel on you in a day or two. I mean, I've had this stuff on for years, two years, and it stays, this stuff's amazing. It's all wired up, and I found a um, just an old, huge 20 amp light switch sitting around, so I just wired that in real fast. Cord's all wired up, everything's good to go. So let's give her a test. Well, now we just plug it in and Oh yeah. Each one of these puts out as much air as I would say almost a box fan on low would. So now I'm going to take these old um, 2x4s, these are actually old pallet rails, and I'll put one on each side, and these will actually span the rafters and allow this thing to kind of hang down. So now it's just a matter of just screwing this directly to the side of this. But even in the winter time, it helps pull the hot air out of my rafters. My ceiling's about 10 feet, but then it goes up there and it peaks out at probably about 16, maybe 15 feet, so that'll help pull the air down. But aimed at the benches just kind of gives you good fresh air and then I have a vent right up in the ceiling um, for the summertime. So now whether I'm working at that workbench or over this workbench I can have airflow. But yeah that one up there is a little odd not something most people could use but this right there here is so go to your uh, scrap pile at your local uh, HVAC shop just call them up ask them they'll have these sitting around because they pull these units out working all the time and just end up letting the scrap guys take them or whatever and make yourself one of these you'll be really happy you did just remember you need to uh if you don't block off some of the airflow either on the front or on the side they'll end up they'll, they'll actually overheat and shut themselves off so you need to block off roughly about 25 percent a good hand width um, of airflow and you'll be able to tell once you fire it up put your hand over here and you'll hear just it likes it and it actually uses a lot less energy it actually works too hard and is moving too much airflow when there's no restriction so thanks for watching guys don't forget the thumbs up see you guys soon bye